everyone, this is Paris de Bono of The Fortune Teller Shop. How are you? And a car started just as I was saying that. Wait till the car moves. Hi everyone, this is Paris de Bono of The Fortune Teller Shop. How are you all? I found this meme on Facebook. And it's called the Tarot Tips Things I wish I knew sooner. Things I wish I knew sooner about tarot. So I'm gonna go through them. There's eight steps here. So I'm gonna go through them step by step and we're gonna talk about them and I'll talk about what I think. You can tell me what you think in the comments as well. Okay, so the first one, number one is Learning tarot is an endless journey. There's always more you can learn. You can always go deeper. I agree with that one 100%. Okay, so tarot, learning tarot is an endless journey. Absolutely. I've been um, reading tarot now since 1990 professionally and I still learn um, more and more each time I do readings even when I look at people's posts on on the tarot 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 group I always learn more so there's always more you can learn you can always go deeper absolutely I think as well what I've learned over the years which I notice a lot of the beginners make mistakes is more cards does not mean better readings I notice sometimes people especially the beginners Put out you know 20 card spreads and then clarifying cards and um, more is not better you know sometimes I find that when you condense it down it's actually better because you can focus more on what the cards are actually saying okay so um so that's number one so learning tarot is an endless journey there's always more you can learn you can always go deeper okay number two Number two is, it can be easier to read for strangers than friends and family and even yourself. Absolutely. Um, reading for yourself, often it's very difficult to be objective about yourself or to read things in a way that you are not wishing for an outcome. So when you read for yourself, you know we tend to want the best outcome or we tend to want to see what we want to see and sometimes that colors our actual reading ability so I, I totally agree with that often as well when when beginners feel they can't read the cards I often ask them are you reading yourself too many times and they'll say yes and I'll say well that's probably why you can't read the cards because you can't be objective about yourself okay so my actual tip on that one is, for the beginners, to not read for yourself too much. Try to read for people that you don't know. Even family and friends can be tricky because first of all, they can play games with you or they don't trust you or they think you, just telling them what you think. So it's, it's best to actually do readings for strangers. And that's another reason why I have tarot, tarot, tarot groups. So you can practice on other people's posts. That's part of the reason. Number three, the more you practice reading for other people, the better you'll get. Absolutely. Practice makes perfect. Okay. So the more you read for other people, you'll actually learn how to deal with people, how to help them with their questions. Also, it helps you to notice yourself too. So when you read for other people, you'll start noticing your own bias, uh, your own opinion. So it's really important to read for other people and then notice how you're reacting. You might even react to a, a certain person a certain way. You may like that person or not. And all this, all this practice helps you, helps us to get better at at our um, at, at reading the cards so the more you practice reading for other people the better you'll get absolutely that's like anything the more you practice you know like if you're a hairdresser the more the more you practice cutting hair the better you'll get because you'll just become more um, efficient better at it okay 
Number four. Sometimes the decks you don't expect are the ones you end up connecting with the most. Sometimes the decks you don't expect are the ones you end up connecting with the most. Uh, yes, yeah, that's happened with me as well. I, um, I actually did not like the Rider Waite deck when I first began reading tarot. My teacher, uh, tarot teacher, insisted that I get Rider Waite cards and I didn't like them. And I bought a deck just to appease her. And after I, um, after I, st I started reading cards myself, I then stopped reading with Rider Waite for many years and I ended up reading with Morgan Greer cards, which are very similar to Rider Waite. They're just a Rider Waite clone. But now, uh, sort of like 30 years down the track, I find that I'm back with Rider Waite. So, you know, sometimes the decks you don't expect are the ones you end up connecting with the most. So now I feel quite connected to the Rider Waite. And also because I teach Rider Waite cards, I'm always constantly going over the cards and always going over the symbolism. So it's much more concrete for me and it's more fresh because I keep teaching it as well. Number five is you don't need to be gifted a tarot deck to, you can buy your own. So you don't need to be gifted a tarot deck. You can buy your own. Absolutely. The whole not buying your own cards is a very old superstition. And unfortunately, it's still around today. There's still newbies, new people that um, get confused by it. But I recommend you buy your own cards because you know what you like. And of course, if a friend wants to give, give you a deck, that's fine as well. I've bought all of my own cards pretty much. I don't think I've been, I've been, I've had some gifts over the years. But uh, the cards I like the most are the ones I've bought for myself. Okay, number six, your intuition means more than the traditional tarot card meanings. Now this one I disagree with. I think it's equal. Your intuition and your ability to know the card meanings is about equal. So intuition lay layered on top of the meanings of the cards is the best combination, I believe. So when I have students, I say to them, you may be very gifted, you may be intuitive, and that's very good but we're gonna learn the card meanings. And then on after that, after you've learned the card meanings really well, then let your intuition run, run riot. Let it go fully over, you know, just let it go. As long as you're connecting back to the uh, tarot cards, that is. Okay, you don't wanna be all, all intuition and no uh, grounded knowledge, because then you'll just be like drifting in the wind and also what happens if you're just only relying on your intuition, what happens often is you'll get clients that will stump you. So you do need to fall back on the card meanings, okay? So your intuition means more than the traditional tarot card meanings. That one I disagree with. I think it's equal. I don't think your intuition means more. I think it, your intuition is strengthened by the traditional card meanings. I don't think one or the other, I think both. Okay, that was number six. Number seven, you'll go through phases of wanting to read the cards and other times where you don't care about cards at all. Both are okay. Don't be hard on yourself. Yes, I think we all go through phases. Sometimes you wanna play with the cards, read the cards, connect with the cards all the time. Like be, you know, sometimes you're inseparable from them and other times you put them on the shelf and you might just want a bit of a rest and that's fine as well. Okay. Number eight, final one. Number eight, you don't need to spend tons of money to learn tarot through courses or workshops. Yes, um, when I began reading tarot, we didn't have the internet. So I actually went and studied with a real teacher and I, it, was, it wasn't cheap. I mean, I studied with her for quite a few months. And then after I studied tarot, I studied astrology for three years. And then I studied palmistry for another year. So it wasn't cheap, but I learned well and I learned from professionals. 
And the other thing is I, um, I had very strong, good mentors. So you don't need to spend tons of money, that's true. Especially now with the internet, there's a lot of free resources as well, such as this group, the Tarot 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 group, where you can practice and you can ask questions when you're stuck. You know, in the past, I didn't have that. A lot of the older readers didn't have that. We couldn't just log on and ask questions. We had to learn the old fashioned way. We, we, we had to either learn from a teacher or um, learn from the client. Like we might have done a reading that was wrong and then you learn, okay, not to do that again. And that was how you learned. Basically it was like trial and error learning. But these days we have access to the internet. So if, you have, if you've stuck or blocked or something's not working for you, you can always log on and ask people. So that one, um, you don't need to spend tons of money to learn tarot through courses or workshops. That I agree with. However, if you want to become a professional tarot reader, I still recommend some sort of workshop or some sort of mentor or teacher. Because I think that the teacher will fast track you and get you to uh, avoid mistakes, okay? So I kind of agree with that one. You don't have to spend tons of money, but it depends what you want to do with it. So if you want to become a professional, I do think you probably have to find someone who is a good match for you, a good teacher that you can connect with, and then you can uh, you find that that teacher will help you to get through it. Same as palmistry. I mean, I could, could have learned from reading books, but it would have taken me 10 times longer and I probably wouldn't have been accurate. Whereas my teacher, the teacher I studied with had 30 years experience reading uh, palmistry. So he, he kind of fast tracked me, you know, showed me mistakes or, or blockages or things that um, would stump me if I didn't have a teacher. Same as astrology. I mean, you could learn astrology online, but I had an astrology teacher and uh, she, uh, you know, she helped me to understand astrology very fast. And if I had a question, I could easily ask her. So uh, that one I sort of agree with, but not really. It depends what you want to do with it, I think. I think if you just want to learn tarot for yourself, then you don't have to spend tons of money. But I think if you want to take this on seriously, then I would recommend you get a, a some sort of formal training from somebody. Okay, I do teach tarot online if you're interested. I do have online classes. Okay, so that was the eight tarot tips. Things I wish I knew sooner. So um, I want to leave this video here because I don't want it to be too long. So this is Paris de Bono of The Fortune Teller Shop.